This was also the first time we went into the upfront marketplace with our integrated broadcast and digital sales teams, and the results were significant. Digital volume was up nearly 40%, and we continue to leverage the power of targeted digital advertising with the huge reach of broadcast TV. Of course, premium content on the CBS television network is the reason we were able to deliver strong upfront sales year in and year out. And we continue to have the best there is, in fact, this past season. Our primetime lineup was put to the test like no other when two of the highest rated television events, the Super Bowl and the Olympics, aired on NBC. In the end, our primetime lineup proved unbeatable once again, and we finished the season as the most watched network for 15 out of the last 16 years and for the 10th year in a row. Looking ahead to the fall, we'll put together another great schedule. In addition to 17 returning hit series, we'll also launch six new shows, including the highly anticipated revival of Murphy Brown, as well as new series from Dick Wolf and Greg Berlanti, among others. There's no stronger promotional platform than the CBS television network, and the best part is we own five of our six new shows, meaning we will have more opportunities to monetize them for years to come. Now let me make a bold prediction that actually isn't that bold. Next year, given the strength of our new schedule, along with the Super Bowl, and no Olympics to program against, the CBS television network will finish number one for the 11th consecutive year. Our winning streak also continues at late night, where the Late Show with Stephen Colbert is number one in his time period for the second year in a row, and he's beating his closest competitor by more than a million viewers. And James Corden continues to grow on air and online. His carpool karaoke segment with Paul McCartney has been viewed by more than 127 million times. At CBS News, we'd have a significant number of firsts in recent weeks. For example, CBS Evening News' Jeff Glor was the only anchor to interview President Trump before and after the recent summit with Vladimir Putin. Over at CBS This Morning, Gail King was the first network anchor to report from Texas regarding the separation of children from their parents at the border. And Nora O'Donnell was the only network anchor to report from Annapolis the morning after the Capitol Gazette newspaper shooting. So we continue to distinguish ourselves with our hard news approach. In sports, we're gearing up for NFL football this fall. We have a high number of high profile AFC and NFC champ matchups. We'll have the AFC championship game in prime time and the Super Bowl back on CBS. And for the first time, our All Access subscribers will be able to stream our football coverage on any connected device they want, including mobile phones, thanks to a new deal we have with the NFL. In addition to the NFL, All Access has a great lineup of original programming coming this fall. This includes an exciting thriller called One Dollar, a new show from Kevin Williamson called Tell Me a Story, and the return of the Will Ferrell comedy No Activity. Then in 2019, we'll bring out our two heavy hitters, season two of Star Trek Discovery, followed by the highly anticipated reimagination of the Twilight Zone from Oscar winner Jordan Peele. From our all access originals, to live sports and special events, to full current and past seasons of our most watched entertainment lineup on CBS, to thousands of hours of library programming. No other streaming service offers such a full array of must have content. Every time we add more programming, all access grows and we expect that trend to continue. Premium content is also driving growth at Showtime. During the quarter, we launched a highly acclaimed limited series, Patrick Melrose, which earned five Emmy nominations, including one for Best Actor for Benedict Cumberbatch. And last month, we premiered the controversial Who is America? from Sasha Baron Cohen, which brought in this year's biggest number of OTT signups in a single day. And the road ahead for Showtime is extremely compelling as well. Coming up this fall, we'll launch a new comedy called Kidding, starring Jim Carrey, followed by Escape at Danamora, which is directed by Ben Stiller and stars Benicio Del Toro. Also in the works are Halo, a series based on the popular video game that we're producing with Steven Spielberg's Amblin Television. City on the Hill, starring Kevin Bacon and executive produced by Ben Affleck and Matt Damon. And Black Monday, starring Don Cheadle. So we continue to add to the content pipeline here as well. Turning to publishing, our terrific lineup of best-selling authors continues to deliver hits at Simon & Schuster. Of course, there's no one more prolific than Stephen King, who delivered yet another bestseller in the second quarter with The Outsider. And who will have another... New release coming this fall. Also ahead, we'll have new titles from Bob Woodward, Reese Witherspoon, and Mary Higgins-Clark. 
in local. We're set up for a strong second half of our, at our TV stations as well. With so many critical races in contention, polit political spending is already ramping up. So far this year, our political revenue is nearly double of what it was at this point during the last midterm election in 2014. Plus, thanks to the legalization of sports betting, we're already getting new ad dollars at KYW in Philadelphia and expect the same in New York soon as well. So, as you can see, our strategy is clearly working. Our base advertising business is strong, and we continue to grow new revenue streams from all the ways we're licensing and distributing our ever-increasing portfolio of premium content. Key to the success is the expansion of our direct-to-consumer services across entertainment, news, and sports programming, and internationally as well. This is the path the world is moving toward, and our outstanding team is right there at the forefront. So we're set up for long-term success, and the changes underway are only enhancing our opportunities. Once again, we feel very good about our record results today and even better about CBS growth story for the future. So with that, I'll turn the call over to Joe. Thanks, Les, and good afternoon, everyone. As you heard, our investment in our key growth initiatives continues to pay off with record quarterly results. CBS is evolving into a global premium content company with significant direct-to-consumer offerings. And it's all because our company produces the content that audiences have to have and gives it to them in all the ways they want it. As a result of this strategy, we are growing a more diverse mix of stable and predictable revenue than ever before.